Welcome to Windows on the World. Bishop Richard Williamson has been a controversial and outspoken critic of the modern Catholic Church. He does not recognise the present Catholic Church as the true Church after the changes made under Vatican II. Windows on the World recently interviewed Bishop Williamson at Broadstairs in Kent. The Vatican's become very involved with the climate change agenda. Yeah. Which is part of the New World Order agenda, which is global taxation all through the UN. Yes. What's your opinion on that? <sighs> Poor Pope Francis, B Bergoglio, uh, is, has made himself an instrument of the New World Order. He is the logical conclusion of Vatican II. Uh, the popes before him, the conciliar popes, the popes following the council, but preceding Pope Francis, have been, um, some of them, well-meaning men. I would say well-meaning. Some people would deny that. That's in a matter of opinions. Open for opinion, God knows. I think they, some of them were well-meaning, but they held these false principles. So there were people with good intentions and false principles. That's what I think. Whereas Pope Francis is the false principles all the way. Uh, and therefore, uh, he's... The, he's Openly, openly judged, he's the worst of the conciliar popes. Actually, it's the principles which matter, and therefore the conciliar popes have all been bad. But, and the, the, more the, good in, the stronger the good intentions, the greater the problem. It's like a motor car. If you've got a motor car with a strong engine and a weak steering wheel, you've got a problem, because the stronger the engine, the worse the crash is going to be when the when steering wheel fails. If you had a, a weak steering wheel and a weak motor, the, engine, the crash wouldn't be too bad. But you'd need a decent steering wheel and to, to control a strong motor. The wheel is like the, the brains and the, the good intentions of the motor. So these, these popes may have been, the recent popes, may have been well motivated, the strong motor. They want to project. But if you've got false principles, they're going to destroy the church. Something that interests me is would he know what the UN really is, what sort of organisation it is, that it puts itself above the law in its own charter, it cannot be prosecuted, it does not have to put anything into the public domain. And this is all in their charter, I can read it actually if you want me to just give you a couple of lines of it. No, I, I, I think I can guess. Yeah. Um, that's the way uh, all of these things are done. Um, nobody reads the small print. And the bad guys rely upon people not to read the small print. And then after 5, 10, 15 years, they activate the small print. It's there. You see, it's in the Charter of the United Nations. Everybody was agreed that the United Nations was a very good thing. So what's your problem? That's, that's you know, that's, that's the typical trick. Um, and uh, so uh, the, you know, but do, these, do these Catholic churchmen believe in the UN? I think Paul VI si sincerely believed in the United Nations. Because if you don't really believe in, uh, you know, the King of Peace is our Lord Jesus Christ. And the one who can, I was saying just a few moments ago, if, both, if even Jews and Arabs both became Catholic, they would get on together. They would be able to get on together because they're united in our Lord Jesus Christ. But if, uh, um, if people refuse our Lord Jesus Christ, then they've got to try to make peace some other how. And you've got to try to, instead of our Lord Jesus Christ being the principle of peace and the king of peace and establishing peace, because he, he, Jesus Christ gets all men aligned with God. If all men are aligned with God, they're parallel with one another. If they're not aligned on God, they're going to be fighting one another. Therefore, um, the United Nations is a false substitute for the king of peace. It's not going to work. The League of Nations didn't work after the First World War. The United Nations is working for the New World Order now, which is going to be the peace of a global police state. Is a police state peace? Well, you have the, the, the sirens roaring up and down all the streets at night. It's a kind of peace, but it's not really peace at all. It's just a... It's just suppression of revolt, which just boils up at some later stage into more and more revolt. You, you're not conquering hearts. To make real peace, you've got to conquer hearts. Who is the king of hearts? Our Lord Jesus Christ. 
And he proved it by dying on the cross. He's not here conquering by an army or by weapons or by atom bombs. He conquers by persuading hearts and minds that he is who he is, he is God, and people need to believe, and if they do believe in him, they will have peace on earth. That was a very good summation of what is going on, I think, with the UN, because people are finding that all these things are implemented, even at a local level, and it's a global plan. And even though they may not be aware of that global plan, they've never been let into the details, or right. even though they're there, but they, they are now feeling rather trapped and yeah. they're seeing that this thing's coming in on them yeah and um, something that's rather intangible about 20 years ago but now it's very tangible especially yeah. in cities so i think that's a really good point a good place to leave that but bearing in mind the brexit vote and the loss of credibility by the mainstream at the moment how do you see things unfolding in 2017 the whole question is not what little men do amongst little men the whole question turns around almighty god and Almighty God is three in one and one in three. The second of these three took flesh, founded a church. He didn't found the church for the monkeys or the dogs. He founded it for human beings to go to heaven. That's what the purpose of this earth is, to, to populate heaven. That's why God created this earth and came down on earth and died on the cross, to populate heaven. If, peop if souls are turning to, to, are turning to God then God can make peace on earth and people can be happy and genuinely happy f on, even on this earth and then for eternity. If, God, if souls today, and that's why God is allowing this today's chaos, he's allowing the Jews so much power as they have, he's allowing the consequences to spell out, as you're saying, over the last 20 years especially, that's the problem. Therefore, if people turn back to God, he's achieving his purpose and he can restore peace. He can, he can cool the Jews down so that they, they lose their power. He can give them even more power if people misbehave. So the whole question is, how do people stand towards God? And are they going to believe what God says? Are they going to believe in his true church, not in his false church, in his true church? Are they going to come back to his true church? Are they going to get down on their knees? That's the question. And since I think the likelihood of that is very small, then I think comes in what a number of uh, old-fashioned Catholics would tell you if you talked with them, namely um, a possibility that Almighty God, in one way or another, is going to intervene. And 2017 is, is very possibly the year because it's an anniversary of Luther, 500 years of Luther. It's an anniversary of Freemasonry, 1717, founded in London. It's an anniversary of the communist revolution, and it's an anniversary of Fatima, the, the, uh, the intervention of Our Lady in Fatima. It's, it's, it, for the, all of these reasons, this may be the year in which, in which, in one way or another, God intervenes to put humanity back on track. And if humanity refuses, then there's going to be, a, I think, within a few years, I don't know how many, there'll be a, a terrible chastisement like happened in the time of Noah. It's happened once before that man, men got so corrupt that Almighty God had to come in and wash it all out and start again with eight, eight people on the ark. And it all started again. The human race started again from eight people. And the great mass was washed out because they deserved it. And when they were being washed out, a lot of them got down on their knees and told God they were sorry, and they, they kind of sold their, saved their souls. But they probably weren't the majority. And today, if Almighty God intervened, they're so used to spurning God, to scorning God, to hating God, that they would rise up in revolt, even under a chastisement, and they wouldn't, even then, they wouldn't submit to God. Pride is a terrible thing. And man rises up in his little pride against God and defies God, and he's got no idea who God is. He, 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 thinks, he thinks he can take the place of God. It's ridiculous. People have lost all sense. Many people have lost all sense of who God really is. The Jews in the Old Testament had a sense of who God is. Um, you know, or, or many, many then, because God... Sh God lived among, God was amongst them, so to speak, and many had a real chance to get to know God as he was, and God showed himself as he was. You may remember at the time of um, Moses himself, 
Moses went off to pick up the ten, receive the Ten Commandments, and the, the, people, the people of Israel were a long way away from Mount Sinai, and God appeared on Mount Sinai in thunder and lightning, and the people were the people miles and miles and miles away. They were scared stiff, scared out of their wits. And people don't know God is Almighty. He He is powerful. Oh, watch out, watch out. Who, you, who do you think you're dealing with? This is God. But you know, when the chastisement comes, a lot of people are going to shake their fist at him and they're going to say, who do you think you are? Almighty God to be punishing us? We are God. That's how it's going to be. Even in a chastisement, they're going to be rising up in their pride and defying him. Well, they, that's their choice. They will go to hell. And, and for, they'll spend all their eternity finding out just what it is to be crushed by Almighty God because that's what they will be. People don't realize how serious life is. It's, it's for 20, 30, 60, 70 years, maybe 100 years today, and then eternity. And these, this little life is just to make arrive at that choice for God or against God for all eternity all eternity people don't realize they don't want to think but that's what it where it, that's where it's at and the poor jews they 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 have some sense because they've got those those 2000 years are in their bloodstream they were the privileged ones of god they do have a sense of what life is about they do have a sense of human nature which is why they're so good at, at, at governing they have a sense of all of these things. They are specially gifted, but they don't realize what life is about. Or they are wanting, they are really positively wanting to defy God and to fight God. And they'll find out what that means. When they die, they'll find out. Poor things, so to speak. Yes, the lies have taken over. It's a world of lies that we're living in. And it's a world of lies that people, the mass of people want to live in because they don't want God. That's the terrible thing. They want to the pleasures of this life. They want the little satisfactions of this life. They want the pride of this life. They want the glory and the prestige of this little life. And they want to forget eternity and they want to forget the, the God's rules of the game and they want to make their own rules of the game and that's the new world order. So it's really a stand-up fight against God. That's really what it is. So you ask about the future. If people recognize that, then God can ease off the pressure. He can ease off the punishment. But so long as people go on not realizing what life is about and not wanting to realize about it, he's got to clout us around the ear and keep on clouting us in the hope that one day we will understand. It's no use giving us toffee and sweets when we're on the wrong road. Because we'll just continue. What anybody can do, even non-Catholics, is learn to pray the rosary because the the i think the, the bombs are going to fall i think we're going to get the third world war and when the bombs start falling people are going to wonder what can they do they can always pray they can always get down on their knees and they can always pray god is always ready to listen he's always listening and ready to listen and a classic way of prayer of, of catholic prayer which is which is the Jewish, the real Jewishness of today, in the sense that the, the, the chosen race is today Catholicism, and the people that are really close to God and can get close to God are Catholics, the true Catholics, not Vatican II Catholics, but true Catholics. And the great prayer that God gave us for modern times is the Holy Rosary, which goes through the Mother of God, who is the privileged intercessor with her divine Son. You may know if you're Italian that if you want to get through to an Italian, you go through his mother. Well, our Lord is like that. If you really want to get through to our Lord Jesus Christ, the way through the way to our Lord Jesus Christ is through his mother. So and the way to, through, to, to the mother is through the rosary. So if you go through the rosary to the mother, through the mother to Jesus Christ, and through Jesus Christ to God, you've got a privileged line, and the contact is immediate. And you, if you pray, if you, any, any soul could be within five minutes of extermination, and if he prays sincerely and really for five minutes on his knees before he dies, he could save his soul. And that's, so, prayer of the Holy Rosary. And I always say, you know, we're busy, we're crazy, we're driven around like chickens with our heads off, 
by today's world. But if a man can manage, or a woman, if anybody can manage to pray the, all 15 mysteries of the day of the Holy Rosary, they've got a real remedy in their hands for all kinds of evil. Sister Lucy Fatima said, any problem at all can be solved by the prayer, praying the Holy Rosary. And I believe that that's true. So my last word would be, Catholics or non-Catholics, Jews, dear Jews, pray the Holy Rosary to a Jewish maiden. And you will go through to the, to the Jewish God. In, he was Jewish in his human nature. And there you will be right through to Almighty God himself. The difficulty of, of, of young women are having to conceive now. Mm. Uh, the connection, possibly, well, the, the probable connection be, between that and the uh, the birth control um, a, a, a kind of um, phenomenon. Yes, is 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 is, is, is play, that what was an issue for what seemed like fanatics. Um, you know, religious fanatics back in the 60s, that's how it appeared to many people, now is, is becoming a, a kind of a real... Common sense. Well, it's, it's, it's appearing as, a, a, as, as, as a, a, a real world phenomenon in ways that perhaps people never foresaw at the time. Yeah. The Pope's foresaw it. Even Paul VI was uh, against, decided against artificial means of birth control. Paul VI was a liberal, but he, even he realized that it was part of the natural law and he couldn't change it. He wanted to change it, but he, he realized he couldn't and he didn't. And he, he, was, he decided against artificial means of birth control because by years and years of artificial means of birth control, they've spoiled their reproductive system. They've enjoyed their reproductive system without, without using it as it's meant to be used for what, for what it was meant for and they now can't use it for what it's meant for. It's very sad and very serious. God is not mocked. And if you, if you defy his law, de defy what the church says on a matter so grave, you will lose your country to the, let's suppose, inferior race, the race you don't like, the race which is not yours, the people that are not yours, you will lose your country to people that are not your people because they have babies. In that respect, they're still observing the, the natural law. The Mohammedans have babies and the Mohammedans say, we're going to take over your country by the wounds of our women, by the cradle. We're going to fill our cradles and you're emptying yours. We will take over this country because we have children and people and you don't. And Putin said just recently, as you know, um, it's a pretty bad sign when a country can't reproduce itself. It's a darn bad sign. Of course it is. He's right. He's dead right. He's Christian. As best we can tell. I mean, it's easy for us to be fooled by, the, by what we hear in the media. The media are very unreliable. The, the MSM, the mass, what is it? The... Um, MSM, that's the... Mainstream. Mainstream, thank you. The mainstream media are, are very, are very unreliable. That was proved, obviously, with the Trump, Trump election. Um, and the mainstream media are all controlled by the Jews. It's the same problem. The poor Jews. And they have created this contraceptive world. And they don't have all that many people back at home. And the problem, real problem of Israel is that the Palestinians living on his, in the Israeli territory have more children than the Israelis do. And therefore they, they know that in Israel they're going to lose their country for the same reasons. Uh, Donald Trump is against um, uh, abortion, apparently. He's against the road versus Wade thing. Yes. Do you think there's any possibility that he will... Um, <coughs> Prevail? Get, get, uh, yes, and get the Supreme Court to overturn Road versus Wade. I wonder, honestly, I wonder if he will live by that pledge, so to speak. Because a lot of the people want abortion. That's the reality. There was a Maryland, there was a, a votation taken in uh, Maryland, or maybe 10 years ago, and the map the majority of the people wanted abortion. So if he wants, he's, he's, in, he's getting into politics 
And he's going to realize that, you know, in modern politics, it's very difficult to go against what the people want. If, you, if, you've, got, if you've got a strong, strong motivation, then you can stand up to the people and persuade the people and pull the people with you. But if you haven't got a strong motivation, then you're not going to convince the people to go with you. And I'm not sure that Trump would persuade the Americans to go against abortion. It's, it's, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Maybe the Americans still have enough virtue to want their president to stop abortion. If they do, then Trump could stop it and may stop it. But if they don't, then he won't. I don't think he will. Again, we're coming back to always how much faith, how much morality, how much faith in truth, not in kidology, how much faith in truth, in the completeness of truth, and how much good, how much good in the way of good morals is there still amongst the people? Not enough. Therefore, I, I, I'm a f there are many signs that Trump is already putting himself back in the hands of the real enemies of mankind. And if he does that, then he's not going to be able to do very much for good. Because the, the people still have instincts of goodness. I think Brexit is the last gasp of something that's the best in the British nation. But I think it's the la I'm afraid it's the last gasp. Because what is Britain really for? Once it was a Christian nation. Once it believed in God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Way a thousand years ago. But uh, now, what does, what, what does it represent? The Battle of Trafalgar? Winston Churchill? Is that what Britain is about? Is that enough? Maybe Trafalgar was a, a noble effort against the revolution. Maybe Winston Churchill, maybe Winston Churchill was a noble effort against against fascism. But and then again, we're into the question: what, what about fascism? All of these things need to be measured against by God. And what you just said about abortion, of course, God's true church said abo uh, uh, the artificial means of birth control is a very bad idea, and it's against the law of God. And if people had listened, we wouldn't have since abortion, euthanasia, same-sex marriage, and all of these horrors one after another. And we'd have a, a bigger number of white babies. But since people don't care about the Pope, they don't care about God, they don't care about the Church, they think they can do better without them, then there are no more white babies, the white race is being diluted and overrun, and the future looks very dark. And people will, have, people will have deserved the future that they're going to get. God is not mocked. He's just. If people act in, in a way to deserve that future, they will get it. If they've acted in a way to deserve this future, they'll get it. People get, people get basically what they want. Modern people, and again and again, people don't like the bad fruits, but they do like the bad roots. So if they cut off the bad fruits, bad fruits, but don't dig up the bad roots, then the bad fruits will simply grow again. So the risk is that after Trump, just like after Reagan, just like after Nixon, we're going to get, after the conservative reaction of the good people in the United States that generated Nixon and Reagan, after Trump, the, the, the bad guys will come sweeping back worse than ever. That's what is liable to happen. Already now, you know, they've got, in a couple of days, they're planning to undermine the inauguration of Trump. They're going to try to do everything to upset it. They, the bad guys can't stand the idea that Trump is going to put some things straight. So, and basically, it's a fight against God. I don't think Trump thinks that he's fighting for God. Although, you know, he said, I think in Wisconsin, he said, Happy Christmas, everybody as though that was a blow struck for liberty, which of course it was, because everybody now is a happy season, good wish of the season. It, you know, it's politically incorrect to mention even Christmas. So here was Trump mentioning Christmas. Does he realize that he's, his strength, does he realize his strength is Almighty God and he's got to move in that direction. He's got to pull people in that direction. That's what, it's, that's what the fight is about, for or against Almighty God. That's the, the bottom line of the bottom line. If people don't want Almighty God, they'll have hell. They're welcome. There'll be hell on this earth and hell for eternity. That's what they will have chosen. That's it. God gives them choice and he won't take it away. They've got to make their choice.
He won't take it away their free will. And so, you know, people have got to choose, the people who got to choose. They've chosen Trump, but will they stand by him? Have they, have they got, is there enough realization of what the fight is really about to back Trump in a real sense? If there is, he'll do something. If there isn't, he won't. The bad guys are convinced. They're motivated. They are motivated to get rid of God. They hate God. And they want to get rid of him. God, get out of your creation. It's ours now. We are taking your place. We are going to show you that we know better how to run it than you ever did. The mess we're in is your fault. It's not our fault. That's what's... That's the mentality. So... May God have mercy upon us.